Hello everyone and welcome to Talent Sprint. Our discussion in this session will be on surges and indices, questions from which are asked in various competitive exams. So what is meant by a surge and what is an index? Let's look at the simple definitions of these two terms. So as you see here, surge is an irrational nth root of a positive integer. I would draw your attention to the term irrational. It is an irrational nth root of a positive integer. Now I'm sure all of us understand the term root, square root, cube root, etc. So what is a surge? When we are unable to simplify a number to remove its square root, cube root, and so on, then it results in a surge. For example, if you look at square root of 4, it is equal to 2. So we are able to simplify this since 4 is a perfect square. Cube root of 8 is equal to 2 since 8 is a perfect cube. Cube root of 27 is equal to 3 since 27 is a perfect cube. Right? Square root of 81 equals to 9. So as you see here, in all these cases, the square roots and cube roots, we are able to simplify. But then there are many more cases in which the square roots and the cube roots cannot be removed from the given number. And such numbers are known as surges. To give you an example, square root of 5. Now square root of 5 cannot be simplified so easily. It is an irrational number. Now I'm sure you understand what is an irrational number and what is the difference between a rational and irrational number. Well, you can refer our video on number systems to get a clear picture and the difference between rational numbers and irrational numbers. Basically, rational numbers are terminating or recurring, whereas irrational numbers are non-terminating and non-recurring. So if you look at square root of 5, since 5 is not a perfect square, square root of 5 would be an irrational number. If we simplify, we get a non-terminating number and a non-recurring number. Such numbers are known as thirds. In fact, long ago, the term third was another name for irrational. But these days, we use the term third for only roots which are irrational. Now, you see here from the example, this is how a third is represented. This is known as nth root of a, where a is called the radical. This symbol here, the root symbol is also known as the radical sign and n is known as the radical power. So nth root of a can also be taken as a raised to the power of 1 by n. So basically we have a base which has been raised to fractional powers. Now n can have any value here 2, 3, 4 and so on. right? For example if n is equal to 2 then this becomes square root of a. If n is equal to 3 then it is known as cube root of a. If n is equal to 4 then it is called fourth root of a and so on. But the most important point here is that it must result in an irrational number, right? Clearly the definition says an irrational nth root of a positive integer. That positive integer here is a. So when we get an irrational root, then it's known as a third. So remember, every third is a root, but every root is not a third. For example, square root of 16. Square root of 16 is not a third, since square root of 16 can be simplified as 4, which is a rational number. But square root of 15 will be a third, as it cannot be simplified and it results in an irrational number, that is a non-terminating and non-recurring number. So that's the definition of a third. Simply remember that when we cannot remove the root symbol, square root, cube root and so on, then it becomes a third. Let's take a few examples here, right? Square root of 5. This is an irrational number, right? When we simplify, we get 2 point something, 2.2 and so on. But then that goes up to infinity. It is a non-terminating number and a non-recurring number. So hence, this can be classified as a cert. How about square root of 2? Yes, this also is a cert. Since this cannot be simplified, right? Square root of 2 is approximately 1.414. But how about the exact value? It will be a non-terminating number. It goes up to infinity. 1.414, and so on, right? I'm just giving you some uh, random number there. So approximately it can be taken as 1.414. But what's the exact value? It's an irrational number, right? So square root of 2 also becomes a third. Now if you look at it, these are all thirds of second root, right? This is square root of 5. So n here is equal to 2. So square root of 5 can be taken as 5 to the power of 1 by 2. Square root of 2 can be taken as 2 to the power of 1 by 2. 
Likewise, let's say we have fourth root of 20. So this is equal to 20 raised to the power of 1 by 4. Now we very well understand that this results in an irrational number, right? We cannot simplify this to get an integer value, right? Integer value or a rational number which is terminating or recurring. Hence this becomes a third. So all such roots which cannot be simplified into rational numbers can be termed as thirds. So clearly remember that every third is a root. Since we have a root symbol here, right? It can be square root or cube root or any nth root. But all the roots are not thirds, right? All the thirds are roots, but all the roots are not thirds. Let's now look at index. What is meant by an index? If you look at the definition, power to which a number is raised. Now that's the simple definition which I've given here. Power to which a number is raised. So what do you understand from this? Well, when the particular number A is multiplied by itself n number of times, then that results in what is called as index. Right? If you look at the example here, A raised to the power of n. Now what does this mean? The number A, the base A here has been multiplied by itself n number of times. So this is actually A into A into A and so on n times. So this is what is known as an index. Strictly speaking, the power here is known as index. Here we can say that A is the base and n is the index. Right? For example, 2 squared or let's say 5 squared. So 5 is the base and the power 2 is known as index. So the index here is 2 and the base is 5. So what's the advantage of index or indices? Well, indices are useful in expressing large numbers in a simple form. For example, 32. The other way of looking at it is 2 to the power of 5. When 2 is raised to the power of 5, it is 32. It is equal to 32. So 32 can be taken as 2 to the power of 5. Right? Let's take some examples of indices. 2 to the power of 5 or 4 to the power of 12, let's say. So what happens here? The number 4 is multiplied by itself 12 times. So instead of writing the actual number here, we can simply take it as 4 to the power of 12. Right? Or 3 to the power of 5, let's say. So here the number 3 has been multiplied by itself 5 times. 3 into 3 into 3 into 3 and into 3. Now 3 to the power of 5 is equal to 243. But then it can be simply represented as 3 to the power of 5. Okay. And likewise 4 to the power of 12. We all understand that would result in a very large number. But a simple form of looking at it is 4 raised to the power of 12. So 12 is the index here and the base is 4. 5 is the index the base is 2. 3 is the base and 5 is the index. Right? So index is basically the power to which a number has been raised. And the advantage here is that it is useful in simplifying the given expressions. With the help of the laws of indices or the rules of indices, we can do the simplifications much faster. So third is an irrational nth root. And index is the power to which a particular number has been raised. So simply understand that third is the nth root and index is the nth power. Right? nth root of a and a to the power of n. So here a is multiplied by n times in case of n index and there we take the nth root of a when it is a sub. Let us now go ahead and learn the most important part of this topic that is the laws of thirds and the laws of indices or the rules of thirds and the rules of indices. These rules will be helpful in doing the simplifications much faster as I've mentioned earlier.